Um, so yeah, Doge puppies are coming in. Um, since the super chat came up about Doge X, I guess I will extrapolate a little bit on NFTs here. Now, what's happening with Jungle Freaks today? That's kind of dominating the NFT news cycle right now. Okay, uh, Jungle Freaks, the volume, the trading volume right now is astronomical. It's flying a mile a minute and has been doing so for the last uh, 24 hours straight, particularly. Now, uh, right now, it is approaching a two ETH floor, okay? Right now, it's at 1.795 ETH floor, which is really extraordinary. Um, there's almost 6,000 different holders uh, on a, 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 a 10K run. The volume traded is uh, incredibly high. Now, those of you who are members, <laughs> not to not to not to pitch membership again here, but those of you who are members recall me talking about this project. I told you exactly what I was going to do and when I was going to do it in terms of and why I was going to do it in in relation to Jungle Freaks. Okay, so um, I I tried to mince a few several Jungle Freaks, but it was so crowded in there that all my transactions failed. But I kept a very close eye on that floor with Jungle Freaks and I ended up investing in uh, a couple, uh, two of them. And it was no small change for me, it really wasn't. But um, I did see this as a, um, a really worthy investment in my opinion. Now, this is going to also tie into Dogex in a minute here, guys. So. The mark, some of the markers that I look for, and I, I, I go much more deeper into this in the members only streams. Um, so what attracted to me, what attracted me to uh, Jungle Freaks before, uh, weeks before it even came out, minted? Well, the artwork, it's all hand drawn. Each piece is very individualistic with a lot of different traits, quirky traits. It has that old school 80s brash, scrappy, uh, classic comic book animations style. You know right? what it reminds me of, Steven? Yeah. Have you ever have you ever seen the show Super Jail? I haven't seen Super Jail. It was on I've... cartoon or, or, um, it was on Adult Swim. I keep <laughs> we keep going back to Adult Swim. Yeah, yeah. It look it looks I it looks just like Super Jail. It, in in fact this guy who works on it might in fact be one of the you know one of the guys who worked because there was a team of like hundreds of people who worked on that show super jail was insane the i'm looking it up show, right now the art on that show was insane one of the <laughs> craziest arts art, art styles i've ever seen in my life and this looks as soon as i saw this i was like what does this remind me of why is it so familiar it looks just like super jail and very like but kind of cooler I, yeah I, whoever did this did a really good job yeah, I can see I can see the uh, how, how the reference is applicable there. I have some super jail imaging up right now. Um, so again, guys, the reason why I invested into uh, Jungle Freaks is this: uh, all hand drawn, all with a lot of character and originality, and each piece being very uh, unique and individual. Also, it's a father son team, and the father is a veteran artist. Uh, for the last 40 years or so, uh, the main um, cartoonist for Hustler Magazine. So this guy's kind of a kind of a legend and has a, a veteran artist with a very classic, cool style. And the son is running the NFT, the technological aspect of it. Um, and I just thought that was a super unique story, really compelling and, and cool. Now, Many of the same markers that I see in Jungle Freaks, I see in Doge X, and also another reason what originally drew, uh, drew me to Doge X is the artwork again on Doge X, it's kind of scrappy, like it's not perfect, and it's a little bit gritty, and it has a lot of warm hand-drawn kind of animation quality to it. Now, this may sound um, like a fairly, like, typical thing but in the nft world right now it's it's not um most of the nft world is uh jam full of uh projects that are hyper digitized in terms of and hyper clean and slick looking in terms of its design in terms of its artwork another trend too that occupies i'm sure anyone that's even kind of been paying attention to the nst scene has been able to recognize is 
you'll get a lot of these big collections and it'll just be like a template of one character in the same position and then just like a bunch of color and outfit changes over and over on that same one character. Now, I'm not dissing those projects. I'm not saying money can't be made in those projects. But to me, I'm not attracted to those projects. Those are a dime a dozen to me. I'm just, I'm not generally attracted to those projects. And can there be some short-term great gains in those projects? Absolutely. Do I think most of those kind of projects with that kind of art, artistic template are going to go the distance? I don't think so. I personally don't think so. I think, so a lot of the common denominators and threads uh, aesthetically and kind of personality-wise and charming-wise um, and uh, team-wise, the, the team in Dojax also is super... Uh, super involved and entrenched and always working around the clock on stuff behind the scenes. I've noticed a particular level of relentlessness with Jungle Freaks too, just round the clock all the time, right? Um, so I think for me, some of the key markers for um, super successful NFT projects are a dedicated team, uh, dedicated people running things behind the scenes, artwork that is unique and a little bit scrappy and has personality to it um and also doge x has uh, a ton of different unique traits um that you don't typically see uh in hardly any nft lines and um uh, jungle freaks uh has has that going for it as well so i see a lot of parallels here um i see doge x is obviously a more of a, a slow growth project Jungle Freaks also had the um, had the advantage of people like Alex Becker, right, coming in and saying, "Oh, this 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 looks like an obvious blue chip project to me, guys. This is wild." So obviously, statements like that are gonna really help put it in hyper overdrive. But uh, to give you some perspective, um, yesterday the floor on uh, Jungle Freaks was about 0.94, and about 24 hours ago from right now. And now it's 1.795. We're going on 1.8 ETH on a floor investment. Now, those of you who would be able to afford an investment like that may be asking yourselves, should I ape in on a project like that at 1.88 ETH? That's a more difficult question at this stage in the game, right? You're gonna have to ask that for yourself. What I can tell you is Everything that I've seen thus far, to me, shows pretty high probability of it being a blue chip project. Um, it just has a lot of the markers there. Uh, so, uh, with that in mind, um, you got to ask yourself. I mean, I missed Mint too, so I, I didn't accumulate my um, my Jungle Freaks at Mint price either. And I'm a working class guy, so. These were significant investments for me, right? Um, and I still proceeded. So put it that way. That's that's what I did. And those of you who are members heard me talk about this in real time. Uh, I just I hope a couple of you at least um, have uh, considered it and thought maybe followed suit because you'd be looking at some. You're already looking at some pretty nice gains here.